On December 4th, 2021, there is going to be a total solar eclipse in Antarctica. Now, people are signing up by the droves to get on cruise ships and different charters and aircraft to see this because they believe so few people have ever witnessed such a thing. In today's video, I would like to share some evidence that perhaps far more people saw this, historically, than what you might believe. The images are striking, and the images are rare. That's absolutely for sure. To see a solar eclipse over a frozen landscape like Antarctica would be something that you would think was a movie, or some fantasy told of another planet. But the real story is this. Even 50 years ago, if you had gone back and told people that in 50 years we're going to be sending cruise ships to Antarctica, they would have laughed at you. 50 years ago, they would have said, are you crazy? You can't send cruise ships. Who would want to go? It's frozen and terrible and horrible and it wouldn't be a vacation, but... They send them all the time, very regularly. This is an image of one. If you had shown them this, this huge Russian aircraft on the ice landing, Union Glacier, they would have said, that's just fantasy, that's never going to happen. But yet here we are. This is the reason I started talking about Antarctica, because I truly believe in the next 50 to 100 years, there are going to be things discovered down there that are going to rewrite history as we know it, and it's already happening. It's already happening. Record warmth, record melt. The nations of the world are not going to be able to ignore this for very much longer, but I have something else I want to show you, something more important, and it goes to a certain, for lack of a better term, blindness that I think the world has regarding Antarctica. I was reading in an article about this Antikythera mechanism, and in the last paragraph, something was said that just is absolutely bizarre to me. The ship that was carrying it is thought to have sunk in the first century before Christ, and historians have speculated that it was full of booty captured by the Roman general Sulla, who plundered Greece at that time. If the DNA samples and what they're talking about here is a skeleton that was recovered um, do show Italian ancestry, then this would add weight to the theory. Now listen to this last paragraph. Then again, there'll be some hoping for some more esoteric results. Some of the more wild speculators have claimed that the Antikythera mechanism was of extraterrestrial origin, as mankind produced no devices of comparable complexity until around 1,500 years after the ship carrying the mechanism sank. Known mankind. This is the part that absolutely drives me bonkers. We have an entire continent on our planet that is larger than the entirety of Europe, that is virtually undis unexplored, pardon me, undiscovered. And people are talking about Mars. People are talking about Venus and visitors from other planets when we haven't even discovered this one yet. We don't even know what's at the bottom of our own oceans. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are looking at this and go, wait a minute, hold on. How did we go from talking about Antarctica and the Antikythera mechanism to simple Roman roads? Well, in Antarctica, there's evidence of them. And I'm going to show that to you. But the first thing you have to understand, everyone has to understand about a road, is to begin to build a road, you have to dig a hole. A lot of people don't realize that. They aren't just paving over the land that's there. They have to dig down, create a trench. Even the Romans fill it with sand, stone slabs and cement, crushed stone and cement, and then the pavers, and then the drainage. Even the Romans 2,000 years ago knew that to build a proper road, you had to grade it downward toward the edges, higher in the middle for the drainage. 
and then it had to have substrates. We'll talk about that a little bit later. That's the path of the uh, eclipse. But here's some pictures that I brought up for how modern roads are constructed. And in virtually every single case, you have to dig a hole. Some are very complex. And this one shows where the metro water has to go and the cable lines and the overflow. And it's, it's far more complicated than just paving over with, with asphalt. Also, this is Square Lake, Minnesota. We're going to show something else that's going to blow your mind. The reason I brought it up is that it's one of the few places in the entire globe that has an area of it, natural lake, that has kind of a squarish feature to it. But wait till I show you something in Antarctica. And by the way, the reason it looks like that is there's been a lot of human intervention on the one end. But without any further delay. Remember how I showed how you have to dig a hole to create a road? This is Google Earth Pro. This is an area that I've labeled as Ancient Manhattan. I want you to look closely at all of the straight lines that all run parallel and at perfect 90 degrees to each other and how the areas in between are raised, what you're seeing here is what's left of Roman roads. Anybody who have ever built a road had to dig a hole. And there's a perfect example right here of an intersection. And I'll give you this link. You can go to Google Earth Pro, download it for yourself. Even the most basic laptop can handle it. The phone version, the web version, doesn't show this stuff in this level of detail. But there's a whole area of Antarctica that looks like there are remnants of intersections and roads from what would have been a city. And it's near the coast. We'll zoom out here real quick. It's very near the coast where a city would have been. Now, remember our square lake? And I defy, I defy anyone to go find anywhere on Google Earth or anywhere else. Anything that looks like this. Without human intervention. A perfectly square, I mean, and this is square on all four sides. Even Square Lake, Minnesota isn't square on all four sides. This is clear evidence of intelligent life, of some type of intervention by something other than nature. Right angles don't just naturally occur in nature. Rarely, rarely do will you find one. You will never find four. You will never, ever find four without some human being or some other intelligent form having gotten involved. And to find this right next to another place that has one, two, three, four, five, let's see, one, two, three, four more right in proximity to it oh and look up here here's another one here's another one this is all evidence that there was a civilization down here at one time so when we talk about things like the antikythera device and saying well we don't have any evidence from history of known civilizations that had that level of technology we should start looking to the stars i just can't deal with that personally because it's not like Antarctica is a secret oh here's another one by the way it's kind of harder to see right here and when you really look closely and you get into the very detailed images of Antarctica like we have if you take the time and do the work it's all there all the evidence is there that there's a continent 
that people have forgotten about. Where people lived and people had roads. And people are going there by the thousands now. Eventually, the two things are going to marry up. Eventually, somebody is going to find something that shouldn't be there. Whether it's going to be on a tour, whether it's going to be on a science expedition, they've already begun admitting in articles that what they know of this place can't possibly be. They have found tunnels underneath the ice where the temperature is t-shirt weather. They have found DNA they can't identify. We've covered all of this. It's something where people just kind of relegate it to science fiction and say, oh, well, it's curious, but it doesn't mean anything. An entire continent larger than Europe means something given how many things we have found historically that we can't explain. The Antikythera device is just one example of things that have just turned up, technologies that have just appeared in areas that have literally changed the direction and course of history. How did they figure out how to do this? Where did this come from? First, there was nothing but Bronze Age stuff, and then boom. All of a sudden, advances start. All of a sudden, people start doing things differently, and people don't know where the technology comes from. Yet, we have an entire continent. An entire continent that is virtually unexplored. So... Anyway, I will zoom out here real quick. I have everything brought up to show you how many different things I have found on this continent and that we've covered in hundreds of videos. And I continue to look, and I try not to repeat myself, but this is the future. This is the future. In yesterday's video, we talked about this area versus this area. Tierra del Fuego, the Antarctic Peninsula, that mainstream science doesn't talk about it more, to me is very curious, but I will leave it there. God bless, like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.